amazing. Well, just while we're getting everyone in the room, I'd love to know, I mean, if you guys, some of it looks like, I mean, it's a great group because we kind of know each other a little bit, but I'd love to know also just, you know, as as uh, some of you guys might not know each other on the call, just while we're waiting for for people, I'd love to just, you know, give a shout out and say like, what, you know, what do you, what do you where, where are you from in the world? And, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, what's, what's your, your, your elevator pitch? What's your offer? Dr. Nancy Zayer, sales psychologist, the LinkedIn whisperer. Oh. And I help in get more clients by taking plain sight, i.e. the LinkedIn profile, giving you insight about how people buy so you can adjust how you communicate and make the sale. I'm calling in from Stewart, Florida. Amazing. Fantastic. So I definitely you're going to get some 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 LinkedIn love from from uh, from Nancy. So I'm just going to nominate. So uh, Paul, you're off mute. Do you want to introduce yourself? I will. Good morning, everyone. Um, John, nice to meet you. And Darlene, nice to meet you, Paul. I know you. I'm yeah. calling in from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm an attorney and business consultant. Fantastic. Great, great, to, great to see you and great to meet you. And I see there's Gordon. Hey, Gordon. I think Gordon wins the, the, the prize for best uh, bookshelf. Thank you. This is my overflow bookshelf. Um, I'll show you the other one someday. Yeah. So thank you. And yes, I love my bookshelves. And I'm a little bit disappointed that you can't see them all in their full glory at the moment. But it's good to see you under happier circumstances. Just for everyone in the room, the last time I saw John, I was in the process of having a heart attack or two. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. Um, and so it's actually been a little while since we caught up. John, we must catch up. Indeed, indeed. I mean, how great that these events give us the opportunity to just reconnect. So fantastic. Indeed. Um, amongst Gordon's many skills is uh, 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 Gordon was my sword fighting instructor. <laughs> so <laughs> amazing so just as the room falls up we're just kind of uh, connecting and just sharing that we're you know, seeing who's in the room and uh just so sue you're off mute welcome you want to introduce yourself uh yes thank you john sue bruskevich out of uh, atlanta georgia and i'm just happy to be here to learn uh what everyone has to say and share so i can get better <laughs> amazing fantastic amazing Tamberly. Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to be here. I'm in Lubbock, Texas, actually shallow water in the High Plains. And I heard about this event through a colleague who knows Peachtree. So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Tamberly, I lived in El Paso, Texas, which wasn't too far away from you for a couple of years. I and I noticed that Morgan is from Louisiana and I'm from Louisiana too. <laughs> Great to meet John, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. How are we doing today? Amazing. John, thanks for uh, for having the Peachtree crew here. I'm uh, I'm the owner and CEO of Peachtree, and we're excited to hear from Darlene and, and, and just appreciate you getting our name out there, and, and good to see everybody. Fantastic. Well, thanks for, thanks for having us, and thanks for lending me Darlene, and uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, you guys have an amazing crew and an amazing, amazing service that you guys offer. So, I mean, it's great to collaborate and uh, great to have you on the call. Thank you. Fantastic. And we've got Mel, we'll do a couple more introductions and I think we'll jump into the content. The idea is we wanna keep this very conversational, uh, you know, as interactive as possible. Um, and, you know, just have a bit of a chat, get to know each other, uh, share some content, and then hopefully, you know, kick ass and collaborate to make 2023 <laughs> the most epic year uh as uh you know the most epic year yet uh so i just saw mel saw mel sherwood who hasn't introduced themselves yet there's robbie and ewan and ashley uh let's use that as the last introductions and then let's 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 get let's get cracking ewan good to see you john hi john hi there had a bit of trouble logging in but uh here we are <laughs> amazing Great, great, great to see you. Do you want to give everyone your elevator pitch? I, I, I know you and great to see you again. 
Yeah, all right, hang on. I'm just trying to trying to get the hang of this. Carry on. <laughs> all right, fantastic. Let's go. Well, Anyone else? What, maybe something a little more relevant to everyone in the group now that I know what's going on. It, rather than my heart attack, is that uh, <laughs> I am amongst other things a uh, project management program, project portfolio, and project management consultant. I invented a new part of the field of project management. So I have a lovely video of me introducing that field to the Project Management Institute of Brazil. But mainly at the moment, I'm setting up a whole big bunch of global NGOs at the moment, plus a couple of other companies and I've just been pulled onto the board of a Nigerian hardware startup. And so I'm frantically busy at the moment, but as soon as I saw John's link, I thought, oh, I'm there. Fantastic. Well, if you're frantically busy, then this is definitely an opportunity, opportunity uh, to uh, get less busy and get more done. Amazing. I see uh, Dave Gerald. Wow. People are coming in thick and fast. Uh, nice to see you, Dave. <clears throat> Hi, John. Good to see you. Sorry. And um, the, the link in the email wasn't working. I had to go into the uh, um, LinkedIn and follow the link from there. Got you. All right. Fantastic. Sue, can you just double check that? Make sure everyone's got the right link. What happened was, you know, the, the RSVP link was sent out a couple of months ago when we first RSVP'd, we did actually change the link. So all the subsequent ones are, are there. But uh, yeah, that is the number one challenge when running these events is make sure everyone's got the right link. <laughs> For me, the link in LinkedIn didn't actually work. It said it was no longer valid. But when I copied the link from LinkedIn and just pasted it into Google, I got the link working. So there's exactly. link weirdness going on. Definitely. Like I said, it's the number one challenge when you run an event like this is make sure that the link works. It's like the number one thing. Uh, so yeah, we have a couple of checks and balances in place, but uh, great. Thanks for flagging those up. We'll definitely uh, take those into account. So amazing. So let's get let's get cracking with why, why, why you guys are here. So we're going to share, you know, firstly, I mean, it is, can you guys see the right screen? Okay. Can you see a screen that says six ways to double your screen? Double your, double your income in half the time. Yep. Got it. All right, fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, firstly, just amazing. Uh, it's you know, great timing that you guys are all here, and uh, fantastic to see everyone. And um, you know, so as we come into twenty twenty three, obviously, there's you know massive opportunity, massive challenge, and those two often come hand in hand. So when I met Darlene, I thought, man, you know, here's an opportunity for us to share kind of a little bit of our the different things that we both bring to the party, really to be of service uh, to yourselves, to be able to. Um, you know, help people get more done in less time because there's so much opportunity available. There's so many amazing things uh, happening, but uh, so many drags on our time that, uh, you know, sometimes seeing the, the wood for the trees can be a challenge. So we thought, you know, when we put this together, um, you know, let's uh, see how we, how we can collaborate and be of service, you know, to, to, to people. Um, so amazing. So Darlene, do you want to share anything about the inspiration? behind the event? Yeah, well, I, you know, I met John through a networking group and we had a virtual coffee and I can't recommend those enough that, you know, we meet a lot of people in networking, but having those one-on-ones just really get those ideas flowing. And we just hit it off right away. And we just started talking. We had a lot of synergy between the com the two companies and also our audience. So um, since this is John's space, he gave me, um, he gave me the opportunity to do a LinkedIn live because it's something I probably never would have done without his expertise and help. So, um, I can't say enough about collaboration. Fantastic. Uh, and really, I mean, it, it is, I think there's a, a massive opportunity for collaboration, like one plus one equals three. And, um, you know, I really think as, as, especially with technology it really there's such an opportunity for us to be able to um uh, collaborate and just create these connections sort of faster and more efficiently than ever um but <clears throat> so just a little bit about my background and I'll, I'll i'll hand over to darlene as well just to set the context but for the last 20 years i've been using uh digital marketing to help you know people reach their their goals faster uh, and specifically over the last two years I've been focusing on speakers you know, people that have a message to share, people that, that are, are uh, you know, love to um, help people and really, uh, you know, drive the human condition forward. Uh, I, my word for them is light bringers. Right? That's my kind of uh, word for them. And, uh, and really just working on how do we take the friction away to help people that have a great message share that more. 
you know, spend more time in their zone of genius and less time doing all the tinkering of other stuff. So when I met Darlene, I was like, yes, we're on the same mission. It's to help more people stay in their zone of genius so they can, you know, stay in their space of, of, of most massive contribution. So the content for this actually came together quite neatly uh, because, you know, I'm going to be sharing from a systems point of view how we can get at that. And then we'll hand over to Darlene from a people point of view. Uh, to be able to to look at how we can you know basically spend more time in our zone of genius, and uh, you know and that's how you you know make more money in less time. Um, so yeah, so from the people perspective, Darlene, do you want to share just a bit about your uh, your background? Because you know, I think you know when I met Darlene, what really excited me about her process was that she understood that not all people are the same, not everyone needs the same kind of VA. That that understanding of the zone of genius, everyone's got the thing that they're super good at. Everyone's got their superpower, but also their kryptonite. And, uh, you know, and she seems to have a really brilliant way of finding a, you know, the right VA for you that will handle your kryptonite. Uh, so, Darlene, um, over to you. Thank you, John. Well, um, I have been in the virtual staffing space for over 10 years. And entrepreneurs, uh, solopreneurs, they're just fascinating people. Um, I really have a heart for them. I love collaborating and really coming alongside of them and getting them the support they need. Um, the way that I do that is by consulting with them. So if anybody, I see that I have some clients on here who have had conversations with me. I don't sell. I always joke and say I hate salespeople because I never want to just push something on there. So I just actively listen and figure out, you know, hear your pain points, hear different things and we have great solutions um, at Peachtree ver uh, Versatile Assistance, but also if we're not the right model, I have a huge network of people that offer support for what you truly need. My goal is to really help that person get what they need, build credibility in those lasting relationships. Fantastic. Amazing. Well, great to have you here, Darlene. And uh, yeah, should we kick in? So guys, if you want to hear about more about how we can uh, get more done in less time and make more, more, more double your money in half the time? Sound good? Should we get into it? Amazing. <laughs> good stuff. So I'm going to share firstly th three tips. So the first thing I want to talk about just quickly is, is the context of who, right? So I think we've got a couple of different types of people. You've got business owners, we've got people that are in jobs. Just a show of hands, who here runs a business? Who here runs a business? There we go, Nancy St. Fantastic, good stuff. All right, Robbie, here, Robbie. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> um, good stuff. And the rest of you guys, are you in a position where you know you, you're you're um, you know getting more done in less time will help you in your job? Fantastic. All right, amazing. So I'm going to share the first the first frame with you. The first. Um, the first insight, how to make more money in less time, is understanding is really nailing your who. Now, you guys have all heard, like, you should find your niche, right? You should find your niche. You need to find your niche. You find your target market. Yeah, you guys have heard all this before. I'm going to give you a couple of just a, a little bit of a deeper perspective on that. How does that actually practically help you? Right? So I'm going to give you a couple, just a little thought experiment here, okay, in terms of how to magically increase the value of your, of your product. Right, because that's what you guys came here for, right? How do we make more money in less time? Okay, so let's imagine I have, you know, I have, I have a course, okay? And at the end of this presentation, I'm gonna sell you a course, okay? I want you to think about, without any other information, how much would you pay for that course? You don't have to tell me, but just hold it in your mind, okay? All right, now, if I had to tell you the same course is about time management, it's a time management course. Now, did that, that's my cat, by the way, did the number go up or down? You don't have to tell me again, but just notice, did the number that you assigned to the course go up or down? Okay, right, hold that thought. Now I'm gonna say that, it's a, that this is a time management course. Like I offer a, a bespoke time management course for busy professionals in the professional services industry. Now, did the value go up or down? It went up. Crazy, right? <laughs> okay. All right, it's magic. Like that money just appeared out of nowhere. Nothing changed, right? But it's just about being specific. 
right? Now, if we were to say the same course, but it's for busy time management in the aviation, for, for service professionals in the aviation industry, did it go up or down? It went up, crazy, right? Okay, I mean, John said it went down, but that's okay. Fair enough, <laughs> all right? But for most of you guys, it went up, all right? We can talk about target market and, and, and perception, but I want you to just notice that, that not, without changing anything, just being specific about who you work for changes the perceived value of what you do. Crazy, huh? Okay. So that's the, 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 one, the, one, that's the one piece of who magic I wanna, I wanna share with you. Uh, can, I give you. can I give you guys another piece of who magic? You guys ready for this? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, because here's the, the thing, in an, infinite, in an infinite universe, everything is invisible. Okay, there's a very specific part of your brain uh, called the reticular activating system that spends a lot of time deleting everything that's not relevant. Okay, all right, okay. So who's ever, and I think, you know, if you had to imagine like, you know, <laughs> that you have a shopping mall. Do you guys have shopping malls where you all are? Amazing. Okay, now I had to imagine that, uh, this is my cat, by the way, every time we do a webinar, he comes to, he, he'll come and say hi. Treats are nice. Okay. But I'm going to give you an, an, an example of the, of, the, of the magic of who, right? Let's say that, um, you know, you, you've got a shopping mall and you need to go and buy a present. You have 30 minutes. What are your chances of getting that right? Okay, like for someone. Buy a present for anyone, go. Like, you notice what goes on in your head, you're like, uh, uh, I don't even know where to start with that, okay? But if you have same shopping mall, 30 minutes, you need to go and buy a present for my nine-year-old nephew who loves Lego and Star Wars. Okay. Could you buy a present? Could you nail it? Smash it out the park? Easy, yeah? <laughs> All right. And that's the power of who, just being specific about who it is that you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing, just be clear about who you're doing it for. One, it increases the price before you've done anything else people assign a higher level of, uh, of value to it purely because you're being specific, okay? Like there's, there's all sorts of psychological stuff around that, but like you can see it working. Secondly, is it compresses the amount of time. It makes it super easy for you to find clients because suddenly if you're looking for a specific thing, you're deleting a whole bunch of extraneous nonsense. And secondly, when you're referring people, when you're marketing every other piece of marketing, every other piece of communication, it lands so much easier because everyone loves to play a game that they can win. Okay. Uh, you know, go and, go and, go and, go and get a, a present for my nine-year-old niece who loves Lego and Star Wars, easy. Like, yes, your brain is drawn towards that. But the impossible goal, I do everything for everyone, ain't gonna get nobody referrals. So that's, that's message number one, is, is, is the who. Tip number one, nail your who. That work for you? Feel good? All right, amazing. You guys ready for the next one? Cool, so the next one is where. Okay, now where is about, once you nail your who, it's about where they're going. Where are you taking them? All right. So if I say to you guys, hey, I'm gonna help you with your marketing. Okay, you're like, eh, could do with some marketing and you've got a certain context with that. And again, you know, if I say I'm gonna help you with your marketing, but potentially a price comes to mind. Okay, but let's, 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 let's use the power of aware, okay? And go on a little journey with me, All right? And we're gonna to go to December, 2023. It's the 15th of December, 2023. And we're all at the French rest, the French laundry. Yeah, you guys know about the French Laundry? Okay, super, super, super high-end restaurant. It's often, there we go, Howard knows, about, <laughs> Howard knows about French Laundry. I mean, it's like often rated the best restaurant in the world. Okay, months and months of waiting period. You know, it's thousands of dollars just to get. It's like $1,500 a plate. <laughs> okay, we're sitting there. It's the 15th of December. We're all sitting there together and we're celebrating. We're celebrating 2023 as being epic. All right, and we're looking back and just think for yourself, what are we celebrating? Okay, maybe it's more money, maybe it's more time, maybe it's you've built a scalable infrastructure that sets you up to get to a global uh, impact. 
right? And if I had to help you get to that and get clear on that and get clear on that, that single point in time and then build a roadmap to help you get there, how much more compelling is that than doing marketing? You guys get that? The power of where, okay? Where are you taking them? You can nail your who, it's about where. Where are you taking them? What is the journey that you're taking? What is the transformation that we're creating? As you get clear on the transformation, it again increases perceived value. And notice I didn't talk about what I was going to do. I'm going to do social media and you know, email and blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. <laughs> okay. Right. I love marketing, but nobody cares what I do. All right. I think the world would probably be quite happier if they never had to deal with another marketer. But what they want is what I can get them. What is the perceived outcome? Okay. And also what that does is it creates a cause that's bigger than you. It's not about your service. And I'm sure your service is amazing. But once you connect to your who's desired destination, suddenly it's a whole nother thing. All right. We're creating a desirable future and people more gravitated towards that. Again, notice we haven't changed anything in service delivery. I haven't changed anything in, in, in what you actually do. This is just magic. It's about perception. Okay. All right. A few just, just shortcuts. Now the third tip we're gonna uh, we're going to um, the third little adventure that we're gonna go on. Darlene's just asking me if I'm recording and I had shock and horror. We're like, ah, yes, we're recording. Okay, excellent. Always good to check. <laughs> always check that. We can always edit this uh, this bit out, but you can't if we're not recording. All right. So the third little bit of magic we're gonna go on to is, is where we connect the two. And I'm gonna get a little bit more practical. Okay. So the third one, oh yeah. So this is just to understand the value, right? About where. Okay, because the distance between who you're between your who and the where, the bigger you can make that distance, you create more perceived value. All right. Nobody, you know, like, yeah, yeah I can do your social media, whatever. Nah. You know, I can create a systematic plan for you to be able to have a business that pays you that you can leave and runs without you. <laughs> completely different game plan, completely different perception about the, 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 the desired destination. Right. Okay. So the third one now is we get a little bit more practical is to build a bridge in your actual product or your service delivery. Um, uh, you know, this is the practical how you actually do your, your, your service is to build a bridge from your, for your who between where they are and where they want to be. Okay, and this is essentially your service and is what it does. I'd like, have you consider that what you do is a way for people to get from where they are to where they want to be, for your ideal people to get from where they are to where they want to be. Now, how do you build a bridge? Very easily. First, you have to understand your who. <laughs> then you understand your where. Then we understand the obstacles that they're facing. Again, from their perspective, what are the obstacles that they're facing? Okay. Once you understand the obstacles, you can then put, you can use your ingenuity, your professionalism, your skills to build that bridge. Okay. And this is where things get a little bit interesting because when you build the bridge, it doesn't start off built. <laughs> Understanding each obstacle is going to go through a couple of different stages where first it's like trying it to see, okay, does this work? What gets the best results for coaches and speakers? Is it social media? Is it this? Is it that? Is it events? Is it whatever? And you're going to try it. Might not necessarily be working. Once you know it's working, you know, ah, this is a working process. Once you have a working process, then you have the space to document it and automate it and ultimately delegate it. So that's happening without you. Now, unfortunately, most of the time I see business owners are kind of like this, you know, they're in the thick of it. They're trying to solve 15,000 problems for 20 groups of people. And it's just like, uh, you know, you are the business, you are the process and it, it can be chaos. So the opportunity here, you double your money in half the time is to unpack that, you know, nail your who, where, find out, nail where they want to be, put those systems in place. And once you know what it is that you're doing, once you have the working processes, you're ready to hire someone to come and put the technology in place to embed those processes and people in place to run those processes without you so that you can be over here outside the business going, hey, isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool? Watching your money and your income going up and up while the amount of time it takes you for this to happen is going down and down. Sound good? Amazing. 
I know you guys probably have loads of questions. But I'm going to say I'm going to hand over to Darlene now, so she's going to talk more about the people process of this, and then let's let's get into some questions. Sound good? That was fantastic, John. Thank you. Fantastic. So, Arlie, Darlene, o o over to you. Let's talk about how we get the people, <laughs> the, the people in place, and uh, over to you. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> again, with entrepreneurs, they're amazing, right? You build a business, you can do it all, you have done it all. And then it comes to the point where you've built this business and you become your own bottleneck. You become your own lid. Everything filters through you. So the scalability stops, the passion stops, you lose your why, and there is a different way. So hand in hand with what John was saying, there the few things that I'm going to talk about today is the power of delegation, time and energy management, and also the benefit of outsourcing. So delegation, what are the benefits? The benefits are that you are able to do so much more than what you can do alone. You have the ability to focus on those revenue generating tasks. You um, are working on the business, not in the business, just what John said, like once you have that infrastructure set up, you can continue to be the visionary, you can continue to be in a place of strategy and not be stuck in the minutia. What are the roadblocks? And I just want to say this because I know John is probably smiling because I preach about delegation all day long and I am the worst delegator, right? So I know these things in the core and it's delegation is a muscle. It is something that you have to practice. It's something that you have to be aware of. And it's something that you have to continually do to get better at it. So what are some of the roadblocks? Well, again, entrepreneurs, you build a business. Turning any part of that over to somebody requires trust and it's like taking a newborn baby and handing it off to a stranger. So um, having the right person to hand that over, building the trust and being able to continually look for ways to stay in your vision, have your why and let the rest go. Um, there's also other um other roadblocks, like who do I delegate it to? Again, we'll touch upon that when I talk about um, outsourcing, but there's a lot of options. A lot of people feel like it's all or nothing. Either I'm going to delegate everything or I can't delegate anything. And there's a, there is a different way. Um, where to begin? So there's incremental steps that you can take to ensure that you are doing it wisely and you're not letting you're not letting go of too much but you're also not creating um, a roadblock um taking taking an, an asset of what you're doing in the day is really a good way to start um understanding that there are if you can go to the next slide john i think we can talk about yeah so so time and energy management is a great place to start looking at what is eating your time what is eating your energy and as john said in the beginning the zone of genius most people do not even know what their zone of genius is it's when your talent when your abilities when your skills where your passions all intersect that is something that only you can do. Um, a lot of people do not know what their zone of genius is, is because it's so innate. It's so natural to them that they just assume everybody can do it. And that's really not the case. Um, there's also a zone of excellence. So there's things that you do that you're really good at, but if it's not in your zone of genius, chances are there's somebody can, who can do it just as well. Staying in your sweet spot enables you to really dream and continue to move the business um, in the direction that you want to go. So there's um, a few easy tools that I recommend for my clients to do. One is, if you can go to the next screen, John, um, the Eisenhower matrix. So this is a simplified, it's in quadrants, right? So as you're going through the day, you can start jotting down 
in the different quadrants, what you're doing. So there is the first quadrant is urgent and important. The second quadrant is urgent, not important. The third quadrant is urgent, but unimportant. And the fourth is not urgent, unimportant. Most entrepreneurs, most business owners stay in that first quadrant. They're playing whack-a-mole every day, just trying to get things done. Things are popping up. They're being reactive throughout the day, and they don't know how to get off the hamster wheel. Really, a good leader is going to spend most of their time in quadrant two, where it's important, but it's not urgent. That is where vision comes in. That's where strategy comes in. That is really where you begin to continue to dream and um, create the business that you want. Quadrant three is a great place to start delegating. There's things that are not important, but urgent. That is a good, those things can get off your plate easily, right? Right. With and my assistant is on here too. With it's a learning curve. So, with my assistant, we started, you know, she was taking the unimportant and urgent. Um, now she's able to also work with me on that quadrant too and help me with strategy and help me be a sounding board and be able to get ahead of the game, be more of a proactive leader as opposed to reactive. Um, if you can go to the next quadrant, I mean, I'm sorry, the next slide. So this is also, it's very simplified, an energy management worksheet. I was in a um, a branding seminar years ago, and I see Joseph is on here. Um, Joe and I were in it together, and um, this woman had shared with us a, a simple worksheet what I want more of when I want less of, right? And when she first said it, I was like, okay, well, this is like a little too easy, right? But as you're going through the day, when you start really looking at what do I want more of, what do I want less of, it gives a very clear path that can help decipher what type of support do I need? Are the things in the right-hand column all admin type of stuff? Is it financial? Is it marketing? What is it? What is on the left-hand side of the column? What do you want more of? Where are your passions fueled? Because the reality is the things that are on the right-hand side of the column may not take that much time. They might not even be hard, but they suck the life out of you. By the time you're doing those, your energy is depleted. Um, on the other side of it, when you are, there may be things that are difficult, there may be things that are time consuming, but if it fuels your passion, it's again, back in your zone of genius, it's something that you can do all day long. And the more you do it, the more energy you have. So really understanding energy management, just as much as time management helps you see what you need to delegate, but also the type of people that you need on your team. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about outsourcing and the benefits of outsourcing. 2020 hit us. I was in the virtual space already, but a lot of people were just blindsided. They had to make layoffs. They had to make cuts. We saw that when people started coming back, they were afraid. They were afraid to, okay, what happens if we have to shut down again? What happens if I have to lay people off again? All of those different things, very valid fears. Um, the great thing that came out of it is just an amazing gig economy came up, right? People just started being really creative about their offerings. Maybe they were um, a CFO. And the, the company doesn't need them anymore. They lost their six-figure job and they can't do it anymore. But there's smaller companies that need a CFO that they could do it fractionally for. So employee burden cost, when you look at what you're paying your employees and you add 
uh, benefits, you add time off, you add on um, insurance, all of those different things, you are paying actually, can it can be up to 40% more than what the salary is. If you took that and strategically got fractional support, you're getting experts in a multitude of fields of what you need and you're not paying all the, so while it may be higher for the hourly rate, overall, you're still saving money. Um, it also, when you have an employee, and maybe some people don't even need 40 hours a week, right? There's wasted time, there's time off, there's sick time, there's breaks, different things like that. When you outsource, you're outsourcing for what you need, whether it's project-based, whether it's, uh, you know, 25 hours a week, whether it's um, for certain periods of time, it makes it more, think of it as a puzzle piece. You're putting the right person in the right seat for the right amount of time. And that adds to your bottom line. That makes your money work for you. So you are not spending for time that you do not need and you're also getting the best of the best. And then the bottom line is it allows you to scale your business back to you being your own bottleneck. You can't do it alone. Everybody needs partners. As I mentioned in the beginning, and I know people hopped on afterwards, John and I met at um, a networking group and we were able to put this together. This is something that I would never kind of just do on my own. He was so confident that we can pull this off and made it easy and held my hands along the way that <clears throat> you're able to achieve so much more when you get the right people in place with collaboration, with their expertise, with things that are easy for them and maybe more difficult for you. So, um, so with all these different things in place, you are able to scale, you're able to grow, and you're able to really achieve your vision while rising up other people along the way. So that's it. Amazing. I and mean, what an amazing uh, vision right there is, 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 you know, I think that's the, the great game. To me, I almost see the business as like a spiritual practice. Because if you, what you're doing is worth more than you're charging. And it really, I mean, if you would, what, what you're doing is worth more than you're charging and it really should be, it's your duty to make loads of money, right? It's your duty to go deliver that service and help people go faster. And guess what happens when other people, you're able to raise everybody up. It raises the whole game. Um, and you know, so when we all collaborate in our zones of genius, I mean, you know, is this the opportunities are, are, are absolutely uh, mind boggling. Um, that concludes the, the kind of prepared uh, 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 content that I really that, that that we wanted to share, but what I want to do, do this is open this up now, and uh, for us to say, cool, you guys are here, you know, let's let's make this as practical as possible for you. Um, you know, <clears throat> like one of the things I absolutely love about Darlene's offering is that you know you can kind of get started small, like having an a a, 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 a taking on a, a full time employee is actually it's quite a like your first employee, <laughs> pretty scary. <laughs> Um, because you know it's someone's livelihood, but you know you can kind of hop in and hop out with it with a VA, and also they're you know they're used to dealing with busy frazzled people. That are like, um, and so the one thing we say about yeah. that, John, is there's a learning curve on both sides. So a VA is a seasoned professional, and they're coming in with skills and abilities, but they're learning who you are as a leader. But the leader is learning how to delegate and let go of things. And with our model, it's scalable. So you don't have, you can start with as little as 25 hours a month. Um, so when you don't know where to begin, you can start there. And as again, you're building those delegation muscles and gaining that trust and gaining the return on investment, you are able to grow and as much as you need. Amazing. You know, and in terms of, of getting started with that, you know, this is the, the the kind of call to action here is that if you guys want to get started with this, you can book a complimentary session with either one of us to just map out like what is your, you know, what are you up to at the moment? What are the things that are ready to be delegated and 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 get started on that that process of implementing these, you know, these principles and these opportunities here to 
um, you know, spend more time in your zone of genius and more time contributing. Um, so I'll leave that up over there and just open it up to the room now and say like, you know, are there any, and, and you know, Darlene and I can continue to chat about this stuff. There's loads of stuff I want to reflect about what she's she's been doing. But I'll open this up now to say, you know, what what are the burning questions that you guys are having? You know, what's what's holding you back from, um, you know, from from you know implementing these uh, these uh, you know these tips because you know it's all good and well sharing information, but it's all in the execution. So I want to open this up now and say, what questions do you guys have? about uh, getting the stuff off your plate and spending more time on your zone of genius. Hey, John, it's John McKenna. I just, something you said really kind of hit home. You said, uh, you know, if the service you're providing is worth more than what you're charging, then, you know, then it's, uh, you know, it's an awesome deal. That I, I think that's, you know, that's that really uh, speaks volumes, especially with what we do. I mean, and you can look at, you know, the, the virtual assistance that we provide over here at Peachtree without the shameless plug here. But I mean, a lot of the <laughs> companies we work with, uh, they start off at a, at a relatively low hour mark. They don't know what they need it for. They just know they need they need help with, uh, you know, as a business owner or a solopreneur. And and then they in, in, inevitably just, you know, seem to uh, increase the package and and go higher. And, you know, our, our uh rate of retention is is among the highest in the industry at 97 percent so that is uh you know that that just says that you know our service is something that is more valuable than we're charging and we we love to hear that and and i can tell you as a business owner myself you know we talk to a lot of companies and vendors that that we need things for out there and uh you know i mean i, I think that uh that, that that applies to to everything you're that you're doing as, as a business owner Fantastic. Well, thank, thanks for the shout out there. And, uh, and I think, you know, I really appreciate what you guys are doing as, as, as well. Um, because just, you know, there's, there's these, it's like, I call it escape velocity, right? But that an entrepreneur has, like we, you know, normally in, in our journey as an entrepreneur, we kind of go out on our own with this idea <laughs> of going, hey, I want to live the life of my dreams. I want to, you know, like, I want to do, you know, I want to, you know, start a business doing X, <laughs> you know, cutting hair, <laughs> <laughs> uh, mowing lawns, building websites, you know, hiring out VAs, doing marketing. And then you realize that, okay, cool. Yeah. You know, doing the, the, the skill of the, of the practice is one thing, but running a business is this whole other thing. Um, and we kind of get bogged down on that. Right. But to get to the point where there's something, a little bit of traction working uh, and you can start taking out of that kind of wheel of, of stuff that needs to get done, taking the least desirable things and getting them off your plate, it creates this feedback loop where you now have a little bit more time to do the thing that you're amazing at. You know, if you're an amazing hairdresser, it's one thing to cut hair, it's something else entirely to run a hair salon. Right? <laughs> and you know, the more you, you know, someone's still got to collect the money, but the more time that you can delegate that stuff so you can spend more time behind the chair blowing your, your 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 clients' minds, it's you know, that's 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 what's on offer here. Um, and I think you know what you guys are doing, making it super easy to get on the wheel there is, is amazing. Uh Darlene, looks like you're something in your mind. Yeah, I was gonna say, and John, to your point with the systems and processes, there's so many tools available. <clears throat> there's so much automation that can be done, but when you're in your own head, it's impossible, right? I always say a lot of entrepreneurs just recreate the wheel each and every day <laughs> doing it over and over again. Um, but I love the way you take a look at everything and see what's replicable and what systems could be put in place to really ease that burden. So my point is, it doesn't always have to be a person. A lot of times it's a combination just, you know, with automation, people, and the right solution for the right problem. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I've, like I said, I have this weird sort of spiritual take on this, on, 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 on this, that you know, the software is, is just going to do what you tell it, right? It's, so it's going to reflect exactly the quality of your own thinking. And if your thinking is scattered, <laughs> if the way you think about your process, all you're going to do is embed that in the software. Uh, so you want to kind of get that out you know, get a working process first and then, uh, and then copy paste that into, and then, you know, in, you know, get the best, you know, record you on a good day and then get the software to do that. 
<laughs> uh, you know, that's, 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 that's what I love about automation. You only have to get it right once and then you just tell the robot, do it the way I did it that day. Uh, and, and we get that. And for us, I mean, we've been focusing on, on speakers as a niche, people that can sell in a room like this. Like, you know, if you, you know, if you, if you light up when you share your message, you know, we do LinkedIn events and you, you just show up. <laughs> Everything else is taken care of. Like we take all the nonsense, all the detail out of the way because that's what we're optimizing for is like your zone of genius is speaking to groups of people. We wanna help keep you in that space as much as possible. And yes, there's a whole bunch of tech behind that. But, you know, I think that the, what, you know, what you strive for is to make that invisible. And like, you know, it, it's the best automation, the best, you know, the, to me, the best automation is invisible. <laughs> it doesn't show up, it doesn't. And I can, I can attest to that. All I had to do was show up. So John, <laughs> <it> very painless. <laughs> that I would have never under, you know, taken this undertaking on my own, so. Amazing. Um, I was just chatting to Dave. Dave and I have been chatting while we've been, is, is that, uh, I mean, you know, Dave has, uh, uh, is, is one of those people that is amazing at sharing his message, has amazing frameworks. I mean, he shared this. Dave, can we share this? I'll, 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 yeah, I'll share no, this. Yeah, absolutely, John, go for it. I, think, I don't want to crash your material, but yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I was just like saying, you know, can I just get this? Over here? But I think, you know, there's no, um, let's see if I can get this up. We have like seven different screens here. Can you guys see this? This is one, this is from Dave's framework. And, you know, he helps getting this process in, 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 in organizations. And, you know, to me, it's like you dig beneath the surface and it's just like the, the, the great stuff shows up in, in a bunch of different places. Uh, Dave, do you want to speak to the slide? Yeah, I, I can do. I mean, essentially, it's kind of a, it's a it's a filtration um, technique, uh, very similar to what you were talking about, Darlene. When you you're looking at the activities that you're engaging on a regular basis, um, and it's there to do a kind of sift and an audit. So on a regular basis, what are the things that I do that I can actually get rid of? What can I eliminate? Uh, and that's step one. And then if I can't eliminate it, is uh, just as John was talking about there, is there a way to automate this this process of this activity so I can spend less time on it? Um, if I can't eliminate it, eliminate it and I can't automate it, am I the best person to do it? Or is there somebody else in a better position to take it on? Um, and if it passes through all of those filters, then absolutely it's something that I do. And it's, a, it's just a good way of kind of sifting through all the, the stuff so that we stop playing whack-a-mole um, and we start looking at what we actually need to do and want to do. Uh, what I was going to contribute, John, is just maybe chipping a little bit of my perspective and my reflection from a, a client perspective. So I've been working with John and Sue and Kimmy and the team uh, for the past few months for exactly the kind of reasons that So I'll, I'll say from the start that I'm not on any kind of commission here because I am going <laughs> to speak very favorably. Um, and it's from a business owner's perspective, my, my pinch point, my bottleneck was, was finding new clients, finding new business. Uh, and I was looking for a way to, to automate and put a system in place that helped me do that so I could concentrate on what I like to do, which is to work with people and organizations and help be more productive and more effective. Um, I know John for quite a while, so we got talking and I, I got on board and I've been working with John. I've got a... a, 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 um, a, a stack of i've got 10 uh, webinars i think we're halfway through the first run of those uh, i'm seeing the first run as a kind of practice run and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully getting better as we go and i don't mean getting better at presenting although that is a very different thing presenting these webinars but it is getting my message better and getting that clearer and working out how to put it across and how to resonate with people and, that, and i'm learning something every time i do it but when we talk about outsourcing i'd always thought about outsourcing and just getting rid of the, the, the crap that i don't want to do and it's, I think it's far more than that. So again, working with John and the team, it's, I view that as a partnership. You know, John and Sue and Kimmy are my um, marketing partners. You know, they're part of the business with me. And that, that, that's how I view it and that, that's how I approach it. And I think it is sometimes delegation is just getting rid of some of that stuff. But by working in partnership, it means that I, I stop getting stuck in, in quadrant one, where when I'm running around, with my, well, I'm going to say with my hair on fire, but that doesn't apply to me. Um, but yeah, I'm running around, working like crazy, trying, you know, trying to get everything done that's massively urgent and needs to be done. And it gets me into quadrant two, where I can do the stuff that's, that's really important, but not massively urgent. And so we work in partnership. And I, I, I found that has absolutely transformed the way that I've worked over the past few weeks. So I'm, I'm looking forward to where, where we go with the rest of it this year. But um, yeah, just to, to endorse really the message that you've been putting across, Darlene, um, and the experience so far that I've had working with you guys, John. Amazing. 
I, lo I love that pyramid. Alyssa, you need to screenshot it. We, you're going to see it on our social media soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll send you the graphic. <laughs> yeah. And what I love about this is that it's also that, that, there's, that there's a very key and there's is the order of these things is that, you know, eliminate the junk first. Because here's what happens that I find is that people try and automate without the eliminate step and then try and automate stuff without cleaning up the process first like what to automate. And it's like, I'm gonna automate my LinkedIn outreach. And be like, okay, that's amazing. Who's your ideal profile? What are their pain points? And what can you offer them as a transformation? I don't know. Okay, you're dead in the water, right? <laughs> it's not gonna work. Uh, you know, you wanna automate your email. You wanna automate, you know, like I got an Alexa. It's an amazing piece of kit. I haven't done nothing with it because you know, my, my thinking isn't clear in order to, to automate it. So you clean up the thinking first, then you automate it. You know, and automated just means mapping out the steps and then removing the, the, the extraneous processes, right? Because here's the other thing is that you also, when you automate, it's not about automating everything, although that's the idea. It's hardly ever possible to automate everything. But through the lens of automation, what you do is you clean up the process and you remove the steps. What you then have is a nice clean set of controls. So when you hire somebody in, there's a working process that you can slot them into um, and makes the delegation then so much cleaner. And it's one of the reasons uh, Darlene and I ch chatted about, I mean, we work with very similar people with coaches, with speakers, um, you know, consultants. And, um, you know, and I see it in the, you know, I work, I come in from a tech perspective and the, the VA is in there scrambling around doing this, <laughs> trying to connect all the things together, you know, holding the bits of connectors with manual processes and the business owners like trying to go, Hey, want to go faster. But the underlying infrastructure is just not there. And I thought, you know what, like your VAs, like, you know, we can give them the keys to the kingdom, a nice clean set of, of controls to say, cool, here it is. Um, and I thought that's why it made such a, a natural delegation, a natural uh, collaboration. Because then when you're sitting at doing, you can speak to someone who then has a clear view of, you know, what, what, what are the systems of, of, of the process, or what are the systems of the business. Um, and I would say to one of the one of the hesitations that a lot of my clients have is that they've tried they say they tried it before and it didn't work. Um, and it really it's because of the person that you're getting. So with if you are just spoon feeding tasks to somebody and you have to micromanage and you have to follow up, you might as well do it yourself. Right. That is a waste of time, energy and everything else. But having the right person, not just to delegate it to, but to be a thought partner with you, um, my VA will make just as many great suggestions or um, if she sees a common thread of what we're doing, she's actively looking for ways to bring value to the engagement and make both our lives easier. So there's a difference between just delegating tasks and spoon feeding tasks and really having a thought partner to collaborate with. Yeah, and that's again, one of the things that I really appreciate about Dottie's process is like, it's it's not just, you know, she's like your, the best first VA, right? Because it's not just like, here's a, you know, a, a robot that will just do what you tell it, but actually go through almost like a psychometric matching <laughs> to find the first person that can actually help you draw those, those processes out and actually map out the first, kind of bootstrap themselves into the process. It's Absolutely. not just going to give you a random VA, but actually kind of match your personality, your profiles, your quirks, all of those things. Those soft skills, we have a method matching process where we have an incredible team that looks at the soft skills at we all of our VAs in our pool are ready to go. They have all the hard skills needed to serve any client, but those soft skills make or break an engagement because you want somebody to understand who you are as a leader, what your fears are, what's going to trip you up um, and really come alongside of you and fill in those gaps of what you have. Fantastic. I love it. Are there any questions I'd love to open up in terms of like, you know, of uh, specific, you know, friction points or, uh, you know, how to get started or, you know, I suppose it's just like what's holding you back from, uh, from, from, from getting some stuff off your plate. Well, here's a better question. What's the one thing right now you're doing that you wish you weren't doing?
And it better not be sitting in this webinar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Darlene. Yes. I can pipe in just from talking with clients. What I feel like the thing that often holds them back is the initial time investment. That's right? a great point. Heather is our director of client relations um, at Peachtree. And yes, she sees firsthand um, what, when I bring them in, what they're struggling with and helps them along the way to make it successful. That's a great point, Heather. Um, I always say it's counterintuitive to slow down and get help, right? Everybody is like, I have too much to do. I can't slow down. I usually paint the picture of when you have a child that's learning how to tie their shoes. There's nothing more excruciating than when you're trying to get out of the house and you have to wait for them to tie it. But if you just do it all the time, Imagine having a 16-year-old that you need to tie their shoes before they could leave the house. So once they get it, it's a little bit slower in the beginning, but once they get it, you never have to touch that task, that area again. Right. Dodie, I, I have a question is that, I mean, I look at this, the, the whole VA uh, from the lens of, of a business owner, you know, could you as a employee employer hire a VA to take some stuff off your plate? Do people do that? Yeah, we we have VAs that serve teams. We have VAs, you know, we are under the great resignation right now. Nobody can keep people in their company. I have many um, businesses reaching out because they want a VA to support their team and keep their people on the right seat of the bus. They don't want to lose those people. They want to say, hey, I value you as an employee. I want to keep you. I don't want you having to do be stuck in the minutia. I hired you as a strategic partner and here's some support accordingly. So we definitely serve a lot of businesses that it's not just one person, it's a team. And it's also just building up the company culture and having the employees feel like they're being cared for. Fantastic, that's amazing, uh, amazing insight there. And I think the whole great resignation is shaking up a lot of things, yeah? Yeah, I was gonna say, I have a question for you. Do you see with your systems or whatever, people reaching out to you, do you specialize in any industry? We are industry agnostic, but um, do you have any specialized industries of people that you support? Yeah, the, the people, I mean, yes. I mean, having just gone to say, who is your superpower? Like, yes, absolutely. The people that are our absolute niche are speakers. Okay. Like if you can speak to a room like this, then that's the person that we're working with. Now, what does that look like? A coach with an established program. New coaches are great. We'd love to help them, but they need to do the work to figure out what they're automating first. Um, you know, brand new coaches, you actually need to spend time in sales before you do systems, right? You actually need to make some money and not touch the websites or any kind of email nonsense until you figure out how to make money. All right. Once you've figured out how to make money, who your who is, what your what is, <laughs> and what the journey is that they're that they're taking on, those are great people. They're typically uh, you know, around about the time that they then hire a VA <laughs> is, a, is, a, is a great inflection point um, for us to, to us to go and help. So coaches, they, they generally have a group program um, and they're, they're wanting to scale up. They want to move from being, you know, just it's just me in the business to actually I have a business from being the coach to having coaches and scaling up starting to bring on more VAs, starting to outsource their LinkedIn, their content generation, you know, those sort of things where that's a great time to intersect because, you know, we use events as, as like the thin end of the wedge to get in and say, cool, let's just put that down in place because out of all the different marketing configurations, Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera, there's, you know, we've done loads of them. It's just a, it's, it's the simplest minimum viable funnel right? that you can put down to get a lead into an email, into a follow-up, into a call. You know, that is the minimum definition of success. Once you've got that in place, you can then, you get that cadence down, we can start bringing more and more pieces into it. But it just gets that, you know, 
from going ah, oh, a whole bunch of disconnected stuff to being something that is actually you know is actually working. So yeah, coaches that have a validated product and uh, generally they have a program. They've got a group program. They started to hire a VA. They started to get marketing people. This is a great great space, a great time. But basically anyone who wants to do you know if they want to do LinkedIn events, that's a great external indicator. Yeah. Well, anybody who would like to schedule, even if you're not looking for a VA, if you're not sure what you need, if you don't know what pieces you need, if if we can't supply it, I have a huge network of amazing people I can connect you with. And I'm happy to just brainstorm with you to see what's what are those best options. And John, thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. And uh yeah, uh, Megan, when is our next event? Uh, watch, watch the space. Um, you know, you'll get, uh, I mean, I highly recommend, uh, you know, looking out for Dave's events as well. Um, and I think I should have just put this out here. If you guys want to network with each other, you want to put your, drop your link to your websites or LinkedIn URLs in the chat. You know, this is an event to help you guys succeed. So you can chuck it in there. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I try and do these you know, once, once a month. Um, I was sort of patient zero with these things where I said, I'm going to do an, an event every week, which I did for close to 12 months. And then I changed it to every two weeks. <laughs> Whereas now I'm at about once a month, we do something, but it's become more collaboration, uh, collaboration based. So yeah, we do something like this around the space of, you know, essentially being able to, you know, give your, give your gifts at scale and do more, uh, be able to do more of these. But yeah, generally like once, once, once a month, there's something happening. Um, but yeah, if you're up, up, up on our newsletter, I mean, if you just, because you've been, if you, because you've just been on this event, you'll get an invitation to the subsequent events. Um, but I think, I mean, actually just saying that maybe made you really, uh, open my mind to something, Sue, is that we should probably have a calendar of events of all of our clients events as well, because if you enjoyed this, you would love Dave's events. You would love. Uh, Jacob's events, you'd love Caitlin's events as well, because we're all kind of in the similar space of doing, you know, um, of, of uh, you know, essentially human potential development in the form of uh, more running more successful businesses. So um, amazing. Great stuff. Well, I'm happy to stick around if anyone else wants to chat. Uh, but that's kind of the, the formal, the formal, the formal piece of our, uh, of our of today's proceedings. I want to respect everyone's time. If you guys need to jump off uh, and go for it, if you want to stick around and have a chat, I'll be here for another couple of minutes. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for being here. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure.